world history and today we would be talking about the indigenous people across the globe and how they were displaced by the time of colonization so when we are talking about the civilizations let's understand the very fundamentals how it all began began and how it actually happened so there were european settlements across globe and these european settlements be it any part of the world they were called as colonies now what was the reason for for these colonies to be developed the major reason for these colonies to be developed was soul and that was profit now how come this profit was derived the profit was derived by various means for example when we talk about trade relations with south asia it was mainly for cotton it was mainly for pulses uh, mainly for textile however when it comes to the region of americas it was mainly fish and fur from north america from south america it was gold so there was variations that was seen in the kind of trade that existed during that time but yes most of the developments that were seen was because of the european uh, settlements that started to develop now how these european settlements started to develop is an interesting story you had the sailors and the navigators who moved across the globe through different routes and these sailors brought about their own culture into the land they were uh, moving in and again they were trying to have a better scope of uh, or a better prospects in the new lands that they were trying to move most of the history that is available to us basically is from a viewpoint of uh, a anthropology that is how human civilizations were affected how the indigenous people or the local people the native people the tribal people which were there during the ages were slowly and gradually displaced with the advent of industrialization with the advent of industrial revolution so the natives be it americas be it australia be it asia considered the land to be sacred they considered that land was something that is very very sacred to them and in an interesting letter that was written by the native uh, chief of the seattle clan from uh, washington in america to the president that time focused on the concept that how the land was sacred to them and even the the murmur in the rivers was the voice of their father's father that means their grandparents so that was the kind of affection with the land that they had because they considered it a a a uh, a kind of sanctity and they had a strong belief that because of this a uh, system they are able to survive despite of all odds that existed sur sur surrounding them so that was one of the primary ideas now when settlers came in the settlers came in to different parts the different parts were explored by different people now if you look on to geography dictionary the word new is commonly seen with the colonization so be it new zealand you have all the words where you have new word that comes in is usually coming up with the advent of european settlements across globe so america was discovered by amerigo vespucci and he was one of the major persons who tried to explore the region uh, after the columbus then when we talk about canada it comes from the word kanata which means a village and this is a local word from the haran ikorius uh, language uh, the tribes and they basically believed uh, this to be a kind of village that was sacred to them and the explorer jacques cartier basically try to figure it out similarly australia comes from a word austral now austral is again a latin word which means south so australia is therefore uh, being located in the south has been named as austral or australia then you have new zealand as we said new zealand uh, was called uh, by the tasman of holland as the first of the islands to be discovered and z the new zealand the z word in new zealand basically means 
C in Dutch. So that is how these names were discovered and had their own significance over the years. Now, when America started to explore colonies, it was initially during the 17th century, you had the, uh, the Spain and the Portugal that was seen, but uh, Europe at that time was aggressively in the path of colonization. So you had France, Holland, England, all of those were trying to establish better trade relations across globe. And similarly, Ireland was part of uh, the uh, England and the idea was to have uh, established colonies across Americas, Africas and Asias. So that was the kind of advent and therefore we believe uh, it was rightly said that sun never used to set during the European uh, civilization or the European advent when you had European colonies that were there on the globe because be it America, be it Africa, be it Australia, be it Asia, every hook and uh, corner of the globe had colonies from Europe. So in this section, we would be focusing on two of the important ones. One was the section on North America and the Americas, where we would focus on the indigenous tribes. And the second section focuses on Australia, the indigenous tribes of Australia and how they were displaced over the years. So those two would be the focus of this section and the indigenous people of these two regions would be something that would be discussed in the section. North America has its own interesting story. So what happened was across the Bering Strait, you had the region of Russia. So people started to move from Russia by land, crossing the Bering Strait, coming into the American mainland. And this is something around 30,000 years back. Around 10,000 years ago, when you had the period of la last ice age that was seen, these people started to move further southwards. Later on, around 5,000 years ago, the climate started to stabilize and slowly and gradually these people started to uh, move across the territory. The oldest artifacts that have been seen are arrow points. So they are arrow points and these arrow points are around 11,000 thousand years old. So again, very, very interesting how these civilizations have developed in the region of North America. The civilizations of North America have a very different history than other countries across the globe. The civilizations, the native people used to live in groups and these groups were known as bands. Now these bands were located mainly along the river valleys. So be it the Mississippi, Missouri, be it the McKinsey, be it any other the river, you had the civilizations that were the tribals, the native people who were residing close to the river valleys. Towards the, if we talk about a broad geographical aspect to understand this concept further, towards the west you had the Rocky Mountain ranges, then you had the Appalachians towards the east and there was significant development that was seen within the mainland which was mainly a land of hunting during that time. Now during this time you had a very interesting story that was seen and the land was occupied by bisons. Now these bisons were hunted only to an amount they were required. So this is a very, very important concept that we are talking about. The natives used to consider the land, the wild animals as sacred. They used to hunt it only for the amount that was required for themselves, not more than that, not beyond that. When people from Spain started to enter Americas, you had horses that were introduced. So initially, bisons were hunted by the local dwellers on foot. But later on, when horses came, these tribes started to hunt the bisons on horses. So that was a kind of gradual change that was witnessed in Americas. Now, what were the characteristics of these bands that were there? There were few very interesting characteristics. Firstly, there was no surplus agriculture. They used to grow to an amount that is required for themselves, for their tribe to be happy. There was no concept of kingdom. 
no concept of empire that existed there was no feeling of owning of the land and that is one of the primary concepts that we need to understand here they did not own the land they did not say that this is our parcel of land this is our parcel of land for them land was sacred they used to worship it and they used to consider it as a source for their livelihood that was the only aspect another important story about the natives of americas were that they had a good alliance they lived in friendship and they believed strongly in exchanging gift so any any person who comes let's say from spain they used to exchange gift and that was one of the major part of their traditions most of the language that was uh moving from one generation to another was oral very less written documented literature has been seen so most of the tribes from americas had their conversations that went on from generations to generation through oral languages and another important aspect was these people were highly skilled craftsmen they were exemplar craft people and there was a very strong belief in their society and this belief was that everything occurs in cycles one thing that goes up has to come down that is something that these tribes strongly believed in and therefore they said that history is written and rewritten from one generation to another so it's through the oral uh, messages that what has happened over the generations is being passed to the next generations and they could read the land they could understand the climate and based on that they could understand what kind of agriculture would go well so they were being illiterate but they were highly literate in the sense what to grow when to grow what kind of agriculture crops would come up so that was some of the characteristics of the bands and the tribes i repeat again one of the most important characteristics that we would understand further along is that they did not had a feeling of owning the land they did not focused on rights of land so that was very very important now these native people as we said were very very friendly and very very welcoming they were called by different names across different parts of the globe so native americans were the indigenous people of america and that's the most common term that is used even today red indians was a term used by columbus when he mistook america for india and the people who discovered were brown uh, reddish brown in complexion and therefore known as red indians indigenous people are the native people who belong to their own land similarly in canada the first group of uh, organized native people were there and these were known as bands by the indian uh, act 1876 and after the indian act these were known as the nations and therefore the first nation people was the name that was given by canada the next is the american indians or the emirates or the amer indians and that were the people of north and south america along with the caribbean region also aboriginals as the name was for the people from australia the native dwellers of australia now this is a latin word ab means from and original means the beginning so from the beginning the people who resided there were the aboriginals as simple as that so those were the kind of common texts that was seen and common uh, ideas that were percolating now interestingly there are the names of the tribes that we are familiar with from america let's say the dakota tribe the chiruk tribe the pontiac tribe and mohawk tribe uh, their meanings are somewhat interesting but not at all related to what the tribes were so for example dakota is a tribe uh, and the word dakota means aeroplane chiruk means a jeep Pontiac means a car and Mohawk means a haircut none of the tribes had any resemblance or anything to do with the meaning or the names that were suggested similarly there is a one very interesting story and this is by the hopi tribes now hopi was one of the interesting tribes of california and these people believe that 
some uh, human beings would come in as turtles so what happened was uh, they were people from spain who entered their land and they were all dressed in armors and well armored people who came into their land and they said oh they are turtles entering into our land and they are our brothers and sisters sisters so with a hope that they would mingle with us they uh, brought about their hand for a hope of a handshake and since they extended their hand for a hope they were called as hopis so that's the name of the tribe hopis but rather than a handshake what they got was a kind of trinket and that means that the history reveals that there was a harsh time that has to begin with for americas and the people the settlers who are moving in are very very harsh and they would suffer the natives to the uh, worst of the situations that could be ever witnessed now how it all started we would understand the north and the south so in the north you had mainly the fish and the fur that was common and in the south mainly the region of california it was gold that was seen so these were the two things for which europe were very very greedy as we said in the beginning the people the natives were hunting bison to satisfy their own need for meat however when europeans advented into they exterminated the bison they killed it so badly uh, there was severe slaughters of uh, beavers of bison that took place and all of those were meant for meat in europe and they were traded to europe but from the perspective of the native americans that were there this was a brutal act they believed that europeans were highly highly greedy and they were there to acquire the resources which they could have never imagined the natives there could have never imagined that they would take up all the resources the fishes the fur and take it to european land on some of the years they would give them very good gifts on some other times they would not give them uh, something so there was a huge variation in the gifts or the uh, amount that was being given to the local tribes and these people were unable to understand what was happening around again as we said the natives were using a lot of tobacco so when europeans came in they gave europeans the habit of using tobacco on the other hand europeans when entered into americas they brought with them guns they brought with them alcohol they brought with them uh, iron vessels blankets and iron vessels and blankets were given as gifts so the natives believe that they are very friendly to us they are giving us gifts in turn for the fur and the fish they are taking from our region or the gold they are taking from our region but in reality along with the blankets with the iron vessels they were giving they were giving two very difficult things one was gun that was meant to quarrel among the tribes and the second was alcohol and with this alcohol they were badly addicted and because of this addiction they their lives started to spoil and that was something that europeans wanted because to ex expand their empire to expand their settlements that was something which would make the path very very easy so what happened over the course of time people from uh, britain people from spain portugal france holland started to move towards america there was a interesting concept in europe in europe there was a concept that the younger sons would not inherit the land so any land that is there would go to the older son and as a result what happened all the younger children from europe started to come to america and when they started to come to america they understood the concept the native do not have much idea of the local things so what to do is to buy the land from them at a very cheaper land a very cheaper cost or a very cheap price and they started to settle there now 
people from poland started to enter the prairies grassland area and when they entered the prairies grassland area they considered this as very similar to what was there in the steppes in europe but they thought that we should grow something different here which could be exported to europe and let's earn something out of it so they started to cultivate two important things one was rice the other was cotton both rice and cotton was not growing in europe so they started to cultivate the people from poland started to cultivate rice and cotton in the prairies grassland of americas and started to export and sell those in the regions of europe but these people were not very much exposed to the uh, to the jungles around to the uh, to the wild animals around and therefore they started hunting they badly hunted all the wolves all the mountain lions that existed into the region and the population was nearly vanished from this region across their grasslands they created barbed wires so big fencings and wires were created so that their area is protected and no wild animal can enter into their territory but this devastated the means of livelihood for the natives because they used to survive on hunting they used to survive on hunting and based on that they were having their livelihoods now no more animals there in the region would badly affect their livelihood badly affect the natives so slowly and gradually what happened was these native people were thrown on to other areas where they were either thrown into a region where another tribe was there so let's say you have one tribe here another tribe here this tribe was rooted and thrown to another area now here both the tribes would keep on fighting for the existence some of the tribe would require something other of the tribe would require something they would keep on a constant clash that would be there so they started with corals and they were already supplying the guns so their work became much more easier the next important thing that happened was they threw the people from where they existed to any other random places because they cleared those lands for their own settlement for their own farms for their own agriculture own industries so they just picked up the roots of the native people and threw them somewhere else and the places that they put them up were called as reservations now these reservations were the places where the native americans were kept what happened in north america and uh, the south side of north america was a little different story in the north of north america so we'll first focus on north of north america the north of north america and the region of canada were very much similar to the climatic conditions of europe so people who were moving from europe into this region were well uh, happy and established themselves in the prairies in the grasslands for the activities of fishing fur and started to have their livelihood clear up the farm areas but the south of north america had a humid hot climate and since europeans were not in a habit of this humid and a hot climate they started to die in huge numbers so what they thought was to survive in this climate we need someone else on our behalf who could work so they started to bring lots and lots of slaves from africa now this was the point where there was north and south divide within america within north america that started so right now we are not talking about south america at all we are focusing only on the region of north america so within the north america the southern region uh, was the region where you had slaves that started to come from africa and they started to do all the kinds of manual labor for livelihood that was required into this region they hunted the lot of bisons and all of the bisons were uh, removed from the region more or less in order to make the region secure and safe for the common people for the uh, uh, for the europeans in america but during this process there was a huge divide between the ideologies the northern people believed that there was no plantation so no need for slavery however the people in south of north america believed that slavery is must we cannot survive without uh, the people coming in from africa so there was a constant clash on ideology whether they should have slavery or whether they should not have slavery and 
Over the years, finally, gradually, slavery was abolished. Slavery, slavery was removed from the setup. The separate trains for whites, for blacks were removed and there was a kind of a common platform that was being provided to the whites and blacks. But the story was not here enough. Uh, in the region of Canada, again, you had Autonomous States Confederation that started and that was where the French dwellers, so in specifically in the regions of Quebec in Canada, you had French dwellers that started, people from France established themselves and they started to demand an autonomy. Now again, it is an interesting story that most of the places where Europeans went in Americas, you have English as the official language, but in Canada, French is an official language because of the same reason you had a lot of migration from France that started there. Europeans had a very different view about who is civilized. So they believed three important things to be civilized. They said a people, a person must be literate, a person must have organized religion and must have an urbanism or an urban lifestyle. Only and only then these people are considered to be civilized. Now, so according to this viewpoint, the native people of America were uncivilized people. So they should be taken and thrown into where? Into the reservation areas. What happened in Europe during this time was again interesting. Within the Europe, there was persecution of people belonging to different sect of Christianity. So let's say this is a region of Catholic majority. Now, in this region of Catholic majority, if you have a Protestant group that is there, they were persecuted. If this is a region of Protestant majority, the Catholics were persecuted. So from a region where Protestants were minority and where Catholics were minority, they started to move out. And they moved where? They started to move to the region of Americas to have and establish themselves. However, there were various concepts that were given. Uh, Europeans believed these natives were uncivilized people, but Jacques Rousseau said that these people need to be admired because the natives of uh, the land, the indigenous people here were free of corruption. There was no corruption because they did not had any feeling for owning the land. The people coming in from Europe were very greedy about fur, greedy about land and no such thing existed in the native peoples. So they, he, uh, Jacques Rousse believed that that was a kind of noble savage that occurred during this time. Similarly, were the views of Woodsworth, Washington Irving and many other people from uh, Europe during that time. As we said, hundreds and thousands of animals were slaughtered, put to death and the idea was there was a huge demand for meat, there was a huge market in Europe and only to meet their market requirements all the things were happening here. So the natives who were only growing for their needs for their own purpose were forced to grow, forced to uh, hunt for profit and they could for long not understand what was actually going around. Now if we look onto this map, what we consider about the present day United States was not formed in one day. So the red region as you could see was the United States back in 1783. Slowly and gradually you had a territory which was purchased from France. So this whole Louisiana uh, was done was purchased from France. Then you had a region that was ceded from the Britain. Uh, you had annexation of the region of Texas that took place. So this was from France. Then you had Great Britain that merged again. The region of the Oregon County, you had the Gadsden uh, province that merged. And finally, from Mexico, this region was ceded. From Russia, you had Alaska that was uh, ceded to America and the present day Americas as we could see is in map. So there was a purchase from France, purchase from Russia and a war from Mexico that took place and the territories were finally brought into shape as of the present day United States of America that we could see. 
so if we look on to some of the timelines we have the timelines for canada and united states now uh, the sole idea to bring this timeline is how the things started so as we said there was the purchase that started from uh, france for the louisiana later on the natives were moved to the reservation colonies there was a gold rush in the region of uh, california that we would understand in a while and then with this gold rush there was a demand for intercontinental connections so transcontinental railway lines were built uh, bisons were removed exterminated killed in huge numbers and finally you had the end of american frontier and similarly you had the gold rush that also started in the region of uh, canada but this gold rush was around 10 years later than the american gold rush that was witnessed now understanding the native people how they how they lost their lands so these native people what happened over the course of time was the settlements started to expand when these settlements were expanding these people were forced to move out of their land and they were forced to sign treaties and agreements and finally they were forced to sell their land so these native people had no other option but to sell their lands and move into either the uh, the regions of another tribe or into some reservation areas or the reservation stations that were granted for them so that was the process that was adopted by europeans during that time and a one very case uh, one very interesting case study that we would understand is of the chiruk tribe now chiruk tribe is an uh, Cherokee tribe is an interesting tribe from Georgia now Cherokee tribe uh, people of this tribe are considered to be some of the most well literate people because they tried hard to learn english as well and uh, the cherokee tribe was governed by the state laws but they could not enjoy the right to citizenship that was one of the main things that drew them forward so what happened was there was john marshall uh, the us chief justice who basically said that the cherokees are distinct communities and they should be given the right to they should have the right to citizenship but during that time the president of united states andrew jackson believed despite of all the scenarios that were going in he was against the concept of granting them the right to citizenship as a result he ordered the army to basically evict the land of cherokees and nearly 15000 people were forced to move out of their native land resulting into trail of tears as it is called as and the trail of tears led to nearly a quarter people dying in this event so one fourth of 15000 people died when they were forced to move out of the region and that was with the case of one of the best tribes that was considered in the sense that they were very very close to the american way of life uh, very very close to knowing english and uh, the developments that could be seen and therefore this story of trail of tears is very very important in american history again uh, there were views from the people who were trying to conquer their land they believe that these people are lazy they do not work uh, they do not deserve any land they do not have good skills to sell their products into market they are not working hard as craftsmen and they do not have a sense to dress properly and therefore they are uncivilized people they should be thrown away from this region and therefore their areas were removed they were moved into reservation uh, stations most of the areas where the bisons were hunted were killed on a huge area and it was said that primitive man must disappear with these primitive animals so the idea was to disappear the natives along with the 
animals that they used to hunt and the natives were forced to move they were not only forced to move from this example of georgia that we are talking about where we have the cherokee tribe but also from the area where you had gold where you had oil resources that were seen or where you had lead reserves that were seen either of the techniques were applied either they were sent to the reservation stations or they were sent to the territory of another tribe where they would have a constant conflict and quarrels that would occur so that was the kind of idea that started but during this time there was another important thing that started and this was gold rush california there was discovery of gold and this magical discovery of gold led to numerous europeans flowing into the region of americas for this gold you had europeans who were hungry for this gold and were trying to make up their fortune so they started to build up railway lines to build up those railway lines you required labor they brought in lot of immigration from china as laborers to complete this task and by 1870s in united states and by 1875 1885 in canada the railway line projects were completed now again the industrial revolution that started in uh, in england basically we have studied that in a separate class but the idea was the industrial revolution in uh, london or in england basically what it did was the small peasants started to lose their land their land was sold to a big farmer and those people started to move to urban areas for jobs into factories but the story of industrial revolution in americas is totally different there were two things that prompted the industrial revolution one was the railway equipments the country being so large distant communication was difficult and they required railway tracks to be developed at a faster pace in order to communicate and lot of construction started to go for railway equipments and railway line projects the second important development was machines for farms since you had extensive farming that was done that means huge parcels of land that were there it was required that human beings cannot manually do it either they required some people who could work on the farms or there could be big machines tractors threshers that could come in so large machines were developed for farming equipments so those were the two important bases on which the industrial revolution started in north america now this was important because the towns and the cities started to grow started to multiply in the regions of americas uh, and within couple of years when uh, if we say in 1860s america was one of the undeveloped economies in 1890s it was one of the leading industrial powers of the world so within a mere span of 30 years there was so much development in the field of industrialization that was seen in america the large scale agriculture expanded you had huge extensive farming that started uh, the animals as we said bisons were already exterminated and the native people were thrown into the reservation areas and within few years america started to colonize so there were colonies in hawaii there was colonies in philippines that developed and slowly and gradually america was now turning into an imperial power but during this time there was another story that ran, ran very very parallel to it and those was the independence and the constitutional rights so according to the constitution at that time white men had the right for uh the had the democratic right as well as the right to property however no such right was being bestowed to the native or the native americans of that region now louis mariam in his work the problem of indian administration 1928 just before the great depression started to begin in 1930s pointed out that this depression is going to badly affect and ruin the life of the native americans for health and education and that was something that was witnessed during the great depression of 1930s in americas the life of the uh, natives 
in the way of health in the way of education deteriorated to the worst of the possible scenarios by 1950s and 60s both the governments of united states and canada were trying to bring in provisions for the native in a hope that they could be brought to the mainstream but at the same time they were trying that these people should not mix up with the mainstream american people so there was a kind of segregation that was constantly being maintained and in 1954 under the declaration of indian rights uh, that was prepared by the native people it was accepted that they would have the citizenship of america but on a condition that the reservation areas that they had would not be taken away from them uh, from them the reservation areas would be the land for the native people now and all their traditions would be maintained no one has the right to interfere with their traditions with the uh, functions that they do with the culture that they believe in so with this the declaration of indian rights was signed in 1954 now as we said in 1934 there was indian reorganization act and it gave the natives uh, in the reservation area the right to buy the land to take loans so they were allowed to buy the land in their reservation colonies and as we have seen in the beginning they did not had any mental makeup for owning the land for buying the land but they were forced into that mentality over the span of years as we have seen so under the indian reorganization act they were allowed to buy the land they were allowed to take loans to buy the land then as we said in 1960s and 70s all the special provisions for the natives were ended the sole idea was they should not get mixed up with the mainstream people and the natives also did not wanted that and the mainstream people also did not wanted that in 1954 there was declaration of indian rights where uh, they were given the citizenship for america they were uh, well believed that their lands would remain their lands in the reservation areas it would not be acquired and all their traditions would be considered as their own traditions no one would interfere with their traditions later on in 1969 there was another movement which said we are not to recognize the aboriginal rights of the individuals and there was a kind of lot of opposition and politics going around and in 1982 the constitution act accepted the treaty rights and it said that the existing aboriginals the existing native people uh, and the treaty rights for the native people must occur so that was one of the major things that happened the taxes uh, were which were arbitrary uh, on the native people were slowly and gradually rationalized they were brought on to an equal level initially any amount of tax used to be charged to the native people but later on this was rationalized and there was a kind of uh, uh, system where they were brought into the mainstream even as of now you have the reservation for the red indians or the native americans in the government jobs or the federal jobs in americas so that was about how the indigenous people of americas struggled and they were trying to have their own survival and with all the hardships how they have protected their rights as of now so the changing scenario and the viewpoints by different scholars have been discussed Let's understand the story of Australia. Now it was believed that there were different theories about the original people of Australia which were known who were known as aboriginals. Now these aboriginals had a very interesting history. Some of the quotation says that these people migrated nearly 40,000 years ago from New Guinea via a land path the other theory says that they were present in the region of australia itself and some of the centuries believe to be a dream time again interestingly when europeans advented the region of australia most of the settlements were seen across the 
coastal areas the major reason being the interior area was a arid and a dry area so it was a kind of desert area and most of the colonies that were established in australia by europeans were surrounding the peripheral section or the outer areas uh, if we talk about late 18th century, it is believed that there were nearly 350 to 700 indigenous local languages that prevailed in Australia. Still of now, you have nearly 200 native languages that are spoken in Australia. And the people basically in the north of the Australian region, close to the Torres Strait, called themselves as the Torres Strait Islanders. So that from the Torres Strait itself, their name was the Torres Strait Islanders as they used themselves to address. They were the natives of the land. However, you had numerous cultures coming in mingling in as we have studied in the section on north america you, uh, here again for development you had lots of chinese workers coming in you also had uh, most of the population as we said was around the coastal area whole of the australia is sparsely populated sparsely means less densely so it is a very low density densely populated region and that's why you have the concept of helicopter doctors that are commonly seen in australia because the distances are very large and to get the services very very quickly you need to have faster modes of transportation so helicopter doctor concept is a very common concept uh, that's a part but the idea is the whole of the region region is sparsely populated and the natives contribute only to 2.4 to 2.5 percent of the total population as per the total population of 2005 census. Now despite of all this what is very very interesting is a story very similar to what we have studied for Americas. Now here the people were initially uh, quoted to be very very friendly and welcoming. So when Europeans first came here uh, these people, the local people were very, very friendly. However, Thomas Cook was believed to be killed by a native, not in Australia, but in Hawaii. However, anything that goes wrong, the blame has to be put on to the natives. So what happened? Europeans immediately blamed the native people for their harsh and cruel, uh, cruel behavior towards the Europeans. And they started a campaign to protect their rights to protect themselves so there was a kind of clash that started between the local community and the european settlements that started to establish in the region of australia however there was no such documented reason how it all happened or how it all began it was a simple uh, mere, it could be a mere simple incident that Thomas Cook was killed by a native in Hawaii, not in Australia, and that could be due to some other reasons, but whole of the story came around this concept. Again, when the people were coming into the region of Australia, 90% of them would die. Why? There was a very high exposure of germs, diseases, uh, people lost their lands, lost their resources, and they were kind of, uh, there were huge battles against the local settlers that were there. So there was a kind of constant clash. It could be because of the health, because of the epidemics, because of the other reasons and because of the colonization. But there were definite conflicts that happened. Another important story regarding Australia is this land was considered as a land where most of the convicts from Europe were sent. So any person who does not obey the law was sent to Australia. So mainly the prisoners, uh, the prisoners of war were sent to Australia. Now, when they were sent to Australia, what was the story? They were deported from England to Australia and the logic was they would be in prisons till the time their term, term is over and after their term is over they would not return back to England. So where would they be? They would remain in Australia itself. So even after their jail term, their prison term is over, they would remain in Australia itself. Now what happened over the years? 
over the years they preserved present term got over they were fled from the jails so they are out from the jail now and since they are out from the jail they are trying to have their livelihood so what happens is they create a kind of conflict with the local uh, the local dwellers or the native tribes in australia and this created another conflict for land so these people who fled from prisons were trying to establish themselves in australia and for that they started to have a fight with the local people the native people in order to survive and that started with the whole kind of war that began against the natives and slowly and gradually they started to cut down the forest area they started to establish their uh, settlements their colonies and slowly and gradually the native people were moved more deeper into the forest areas and most of their areas and land was cleared now vast sheep stations mining stations were created and these people who fled from prisons were working on these areas there were vineyards wheat farming that started so by and large the idea was to start a kind of life in australia and with this idea you had three important concepts that started the first was wool the second was wheat and the third was gold so these three things started so these people the convicts who were out now were either working with wool industries or growing or, or working on wheat farms or doing mining for gold so these three were some of the most important prospects in australia so there was a suggestion why don't we bring a new capital into australia and call it as wool wheat gold but interestingly there was another name suggested for the capital and that was canberra uh, it was based on a native name which was canberra and canberra basically means a meeting point so canberra which is another word for canberra basically talks about a meeting point so it was believed to be a meeting point of what meeting point of wool wheat and gold and therefore the name canberra and Cam canberra since 1911 started to be the capital of australia now as the process started as we know you had lots of chinese workers coming in china was providing a cheap labor similar to the cheap labor that was provided in the gold rush at california that we have already studied in our section on north america till 1974 there was a kind of popular fear for the dark people so they do not want non whites to be part of the system so they were trying to keep the people of africa south africa and other parts of asia away and they were trying to keep this land for themselves so that non white people are out non white people should not be part of australia and that was the sole motive with which they were moving forward now this is a kind of timeline that we have here how it all started so initially it started with dutch travelers arriving to australia then you had thomas cook who reached the place which was known as botany bay and this botany bay was later no known as new south wales uh, later on you had founding of sydney that took place uh, as we said chinese immigration started but it was stopped by law in 1855 and then you had a gold rush that started and this gold rush was very important because with this gold rush you had millions of migrants from europe coming into the regions of australia trying to settle and you had more than 2 million migrants from europe that entered australia after the gold rush started and we have already talked about how the capital started to begin but if we look on to the history that has been quoted anthropologists have played a major role they have focused on study of the native culture preserving the art galleries uh, preserving the art forms through the art galleries through, through the museums and henry reynolds uh, in one of his works uh, why we aren't we told that means he basically condemned all the writings of the 
uh, Australian history that was made from the Thomas Cook's discovery. So his point of view was a little different from what was quoted by Thomas Cook and therefore there was a constant wave of design that started to come up. So be it in the form of culture, art, there were designing of the rooms that started and in 1974 the concept of multiculturalism started. Now this multiculturalism is a unique concept to Australia. Why? Because according to multiculturalism, none of the cultures are different and all of the cultures would be treated at par. There won't be any kind of uh, differences that would, be, that would be made based on the culture of an individual. So be it an immigrant from Asia, be it an immigrant from Europe, be it from Americas, all of those are free to follow their own culture and settings. Again, a very important concept that began during that time was initially the native people of Australia were not given any of the lands. So there was a term which came into being which was known as terra nullis. Terra null, null means zero. So terra nullis, terra means land. So they said the land belongs to nobody. So natives were not given the right to land. However, there were constant uh, upheavals that came in and finally you had the policy that ended and the uh, natives were given the rights for the land and this case went in the Australian High Court and the native rights were later on retained in 1992. So after 1992, the natives got the rights for the land. Till that time, the natives did not have the right to land. They were thrown into the forest areas into the more interior areas but they did not have the right for the land next important thing was a very important aspect that the children that were born who were of mixed breed means a native European and a native settler's child. Now these children who were born there who were a kind of mixed breed of Europeans and the native dwellers were not allowed to meet uh, the native relatives, the local relatives of the aboriginals or the natives of Australia. They were forcefully kept out of uh, the native relationship and they were only brought brought and born into the European settlement. So that was a very, very uh, different aspect that was seen in Australia. Later on, there were numerous human rights agitations and numerous movements that started with w uh, UN. And it was brought into being that these children should have equal right. And as a result, you had a national sorry day that was started in 1999. And that was was an apology for all the children who had lost their native relatives during the period of 1820s to 1970s and that's why you have the celebration of the national sorry day that is being made because the children were separated from their native relatives from their local from the local descendants of australia the local relatives were separated from the children and they were brought born and brought in the European settlements itself. So within Australia, that was a kind of scenario that happened. So definitely the there was a lot of pressure on indigenous population and as we could see it is very recent that all these laws came into existence not less than 20 years back what we are talking about and the things have slowly and gradually started to come in line. So uh, that was about understanding the Australian history, understanding how the local people in Australia were displaced and uh, they were, uh, they were, uh, their rights had been taken away. So we would be talking about many more interesting sessions in upcoming classes. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.